Hey everyone, it's Farrick, and welcome to another Wizard101 video. I'll be explaining how to get started with fishing, how the basic mechanics work, and why it is one of the most important and overlooked aspects of this game. Now, this video will be a prerequisite to the in-depth fishing guide, where I will go into further detail on how to complete all the fishing quests, as well as how to make use of it to improve your wizard. I highly recommend you watch this video to the end before watching the fishing guide or attempting anything done in that guide to ensure that you know everything there is to know about fishing. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you want to be notified of when I upload future videos, such as that guide, be sure to click the subscribe button and bell icon. Besides being a peaceful escape from the frustrations of dealing with bad RNG in PvP or the difficulty of questing, fishing can have four main uses if done properly. With fishing, you can get a lot of gold very quickly, craft mega snacks without gardening, acquire cosmetic items for stitching, and save a ton of crowns by getting a free stat boosting mount. These benefits are greatly amplified by the zero energy fishing member benefit, which is why it is, in my opinion, among the top three member benefits offered in this game. The specifics on how to take advantage of these different uses will be in the fishing guide. However, it is important to get started with fishing and understanding the basics before jumping into the quests. Before you even get started with fishing, I highly recommend you get certain pieces of gear. You do not need any crowns to get it, and it will greatly benefit you in fishing. I'm talking about the Seafarer set, which includes a hat, robe, and boots, all of which can be purchased from Brandon Mistborn who is outside the arena in Unicorn Way. The main reasons for this gear set is because it gives energy, something that is used in fishing, and it gives fishing luck, a very important stat that I will talk about later. The total cost for this set is 900 arena tickets, however, at the time of recording this video, arena tickets can be acquired easily with no effort. All you have to do is enter tournaments which only cost 50 gold. Even if you forfeit every match in the tournament and come in dead last, you're guaranteed 250 arena tickets, enough to guarantee you the full set of fishing gear in just 4 tournaments, or 200 total gold. To begin fishing, you have to go to Lucky Hookline in the commons. At the beginning, he will teach you the basics of how fishing works, but I will go into more detail. Just like combat and gardening, fishing has different types of spells that can be cast, as well as an experience bar showing what level you are. Better fishing spells are locked behind quests, or require you to be a certain level to buy them. Just like gardening spells and pet training, these spells cost energy. There are two different types of fishing spells, fishing utility and fish catching spells. The names are self-explanatory, but it is important to know how fish catching spells work. When you are close to a fishable body of water, this fishing icon appears, and when you cast a fish catching spell, a spherical ball will pop out and land some distance away in the direction you throw it. A button appears for you to cancel the spell, and you can either click on it or press space to cancel the spell. Once the fish becomes attracted to the lure, however, it will begin to glow. The text will change to Invoke Spell, and you will be unable to cancel the spell without spending energy. In order to attract a fish to the lure, you must land the lure somewhere in front of the fish. This is something that is easy at first, however as the fish becomes more rare, they become harder to catch as they move more quickly and more randomly. When a fish becomes attracted to the lure, one of two things can occur. The fish will either bob the lure, or it will hook onto it. There is a visual and auditory difference between the two scenarios. Here's what it looks and sounds like when a fish bobs the lure. Here's what it looks and sounds like when a fish hooks onto the lure. If a fish is hooked onto the lure, you must quickly invoke the spell by pressing space or clicking the button to prevent it from getting away. After that, there is still a chance of the fish getting away if the incorrect lure was used to catch it. Each fish has a school as well as a level. This brings us to fishing luck, the important stat that comes from fishing gear, as well as the reason why you should be watching this video before you attempt fishing, because you get a fishing luck elixir from the quest that is instantly equipped and should be used wisely. 
Fishing luck is rather arbitrary, however we do know the more you have, the better it is. It gives you a higher chance to catch a fish with a lure that is not specifically for that fish. For example, if you want to catch a fire fish with an ice lure, or if you want to catch a rank 3 ice fish with a rank 2 lure, you have a better chance of catching it if you have higher fishing luck. There is one more type of fish that is different from normal ones, and it is the sentinel. These fish differ visually and behaviorally. They have the same silhouette as a normal fish, except they appear to have spikes coming off of them, making them very easy to spot. When you throw down a lure into the pond anywhere near a sentinel fish, it will begin to swim rapidly towards the lure, and hook on, scaring off any normal fish that is currently attracted to the lure. This fish will never bob the lure, and will run off very quickly. To catch sentinels, you must invoke the spell as soon as they make contact with your lure. There are only two sentinel ranks. However, even with a rank 3 lure for the school of that sentinel, there is still a chance that the fish will get away after invoking the spell. This is where having the fishing gear from before, as well as using the free fishing luck elixir from the quest can be extremely useful. When you finally catch a fish, it will most likely be a fish that is possible to catch from that specific pond. However, there is a chance to catch a chest instead of a fish. The possible rewards you can get from a chest depends on the location you fish out that chest. The rewards can range from reagents to really rare bundle mounts depending on the area you fish in. After you have completely cleared out the fishing pond, it will take 20 minutes for them to naturally reset without the use of fishing spells created to instantly reset the ponds. Another thing to note is that any fish that others catch or scare off by stepping on them will not affect the fish in your pond, and you in turn won't affect any other player's fishing ponds. In order to store fish, you can store them in aquariums, provided the fish meet the requirements of that aquarium, and these can be transported between accounts via the shared bank. However, a better method of storing fish is by buying the sunken palace house from the crown shop. This house allows you to place fish down as regular housing items, which is important because it gives you an additional 250 space to store fish on top of the 100 in your fishing basket. This wraps up all the relevant information there is on fishing in Wizard 101 pertaining to the fishing guide. Once again, if you found this video helpful, be sure to click the like button as these videos do take a lot of time to make. Thank you all for watching, and as always, have a good evening.